not a game, it's a rich thing. Today, we will focus on the elements and principles of good design. The elements of good design are the building blocks of your design. While how we apply these building blocks are the principles of design. Example, imagine you as being a contractor handling a building project you will need materials to do your work and also a team to help you do the work the materials are your elements and your team are the principles which means elements are the building blocks we use to construct our design while principles are how we arrange the elements in an effective manner when you apply these elements and principles in your design you will end up in what we refer to as effective visual hierarchy none of them is better than each other all of them are equally important Let's look at the elements of design. We have seven elements of design which are space, line, shape, size, texture, value, and color. While the principles of design are focal points, contrast, balance, movement, pattern, unity, and guest out. What happens if we do not apply our elements and principles? You will have a failed building project. At the end of the day, it does not matter how well you know how to use your design software. If you do not have the strong foundation, your designs will not be effective. That is why this lesson is very important. Remember to break the rules if you know them. You will like to make a note on the elements of principles of design. So let's start with the first element which is space. Take a look at this design. Observe it very well and then take a look at this one. You will find out you are struggling to read through this one. This is to say, space is not something we should fear. This is one of the elements that forms part of your design. Space is the empty area on your design, which is referred to as white or negative space. It does not mean that your space must always be white. It means it is an empty space. Field aspects are referred to as positive space. The closer the element in your design, the more difficult the viewer views your design. When there is space in your design, it makes your design more legible for your viewer to read. It helps to provide your viewer a visual rest. We can refer to line as a primal element because all other elements consist of some form of line. A line can be straight, curved, or broken up, thick or thin, vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. Line is the basic form of your design. All lines come with different meanings. 
What comes to your mind when viewing a strong diagonal lines? It's not a sense of calmness, but a sense of urgency and excitement. Diagonal lines can be used to convey motion or strength. Thin horizontal line will convey a sense of elegance and sophistication. Thin vertical lines will convey a sense of elegance. Thin vertical lines shows success and excellence, and thick vertical lines shows growth and stability. Using specific colors can also change the meaning of your line. Shape is also known as form. We have three types of shapes. We have organic shape, inorganic and abstract. The organic shape is also found in nature. While the inorganic shape are man-made and abstract are simplified forms. Think about the shape of a human body in a public restroom. This is not a human but resembles a human. A circle which is organic looks like something like a female and resembles a sense of power and protection. A rectangular square conveys a sense of stability, strength and order. A rectangular square is more of masculine than a circle. That is, it looks like male stuff. A triangle, on the other hand, has different meaning depending on the direction it points. That is to say, if it points up, it means growth. If it comes down, it means maybe something is degrading. If it goes to the left, it means something is going backwards. And if it goes to the right, it means something is moving forward. So let's go back to our question of the day. Which typeface is most hated by designers? If you choose Comic Sans, you are correct, followed by Papyrus. But why do they hate this typeface? It's not because the typeface is not nice, but because it has been overused for the wrong purpose. Most people use typefaces without knowing the meaning of the typeface. The next element is size, also known as scale or mass. Size is related to other elements. It draws attention to large elements and makes less important elements not to be emphasized. It helps us to achieve a good visual hierarchy. For example, the circle on the right is bigger than the circle on the left. In the other one, the circle are the same. This makes us to understand that bigger elements look so important than smaller elements. So ensure that you arrange informations in your design according to their importance. At the end of this lecture, we will do a little practical of what we have learned. Texture is either physical or visual. Texture is formed by repeating shapes or lines continuously. When creating a logo, ensure to keep texture so minimum. Texture creates a sense of depth. Texture acts as a secondary element, giving support to other elements. It can be a photograph or a background on your design. Value refers 
to tones of light or dark of a color on your design. That is, it refers to how light a particular color or element is or how dark a particular color or element is on your design. The use of one color on your design is known as a monochromatic color scheme. What I will advise is, anytime you are done with your design, try and visualize the design with grayscale. And if you do not get a lot of contrast on your design, please reconsider your use of colors. For example, now this is Corel Draw. And I want to make an illustration using these two illustrations. This looks like a Microsoft logo. And first we convert this to grayscale and convert this also to grayscale. As you can see, there are more contrast on this other design than this other design. Whenever you finish designing either a logo or any other design, what you do is convert it to grayscale and when you convert, if you have less contrast on your design, know that you have to change colors and if it's something like this then you are good to go so let's go back and see what we can do to make our contrast on this design perfect again you can see yellow chalk this is pink and i think this is powder blue so we have to change the colors to something like maybe red and purple and here we change it to green or something green and change this to orange then let's see the contrast again you can see it has more contrast like this other one this time around so this is how you should know how your colors are this is how you test your colors to see if your color combination is okay if it has low contrast or high contrast so now the both colors are good to go color is the only element that has a wide phase of study before you understand color you must understand the color theory and color psychology